This is a Unisonic calculator and clock from 1972. I found this at a local thrift store and I thought it was somewhat interesting since it was a vintage calculator that also included a clock. Which was a good selling point for me because it isn't working so great as a calculator right now. It's looking like the keypad is adding extra numbers as you use it. Additionally, some of the keys barely work at all. So it looks like I'm going to have to take a crack at repairing this thing if I want it to be more than just a clock. Now, this isn't my first vintage calculator rodeo. This is a Sony Sobox calculator that is actually a year newer than the Unisonic. The size difference is due to the Sony using discrete components for its logic, which you can see more about in its video here, and the Unisonic using a monolithic IC to handle its logic. Also, the Sony uses those wonderful Nixies. And the Unisonic uses VFD tubes. Also interestingly, the Sobox has more features than the Unisonic, even though the Unisonic is technically more advanced. That is, of course, except for the clock. Which is not too bad for an early digital clock. I've let it run for a while, and it's only fast by about a second an hour. But as cool as that is, I would still like to get it working as a calculator. And it's nowhere near usable right now. Well, let's get this thing open and uh, see what's wrong. Okay. Now let's get the top off. Ah, there we go. Now we have to get the keypad off to see how the keys are held on. For some reason they were compelled to solder all these nuts in place. But they didn't think this through very well, because they used black oxide coated screws which the solder won't take to. Now let's see how these keys work. Well it doesn't just lift off. Ah, there we go. Those are some pretty strange springs. So the springs themselves are also what sends the electrical signal for when the key's been pressed. There are two different springs in there, and they touch to form the contact. I haven't seen that before, that's different. Since it seems like the keys are being pressed multiple times, I'm starting to suspect the debound circuit isn't working. So I'm trying to figure out how all the keys are wired, and it looks like they're not matrixed. Instead, there's one long trace that connects one side of each key, and they all have separate outputs going to the ribbon cable. If I measure the voltage across the keys while the unit's on, I get a reading of around 11 volts. So the keys are probably held high with a 12 volt signal until depressed and pulled low to ground. I tried to follow the output of one of the keys back to the main circuit board, but it goes to the other side of the board as soon as it gets there. So it looks like I'm going to have to pull the circuit board out if I want to try and figure out how the debound circuit works. Man, this thing comes apart really inconveniently. Wow, this is really nice. They don't have silkscreen on the board, but they did put labels for some of the pins on the main IC in the copper. Looking at what I assume is the number input, N1, N2, N4, and N8, seems like a binary encoded way of inputting the numbers. So these may not be matrix, but each key might connect to multiple pins on the IC at once. These 110K and 10 nanofarad capacitors connect directly to the inputs on the IC, so these must form the debounce circuit. I pulled off one of the capacitors to check it to see if it's still good, and it is, which isn't surprising because it's a ceramic capacitor. Those don't usually fail. This is a fairly weak debounce though, so I'm going to try putting some more capacitors on the keys themselves and see if that helps.
Well, instantly it doesn't seem to have helped. Oh, that's pretty bad. Uh, I don't remember it doing that before, changing the numbers. Five's working now, though. Hmm. Alright, I took the capacitors off in case I was changing the timing for the binary coded input. I don't remember that happening, so hopefully that was what was causing the wrong numbers to appear, because that could be a serious problem. Oh, great. You can see here a 1 snuck in when I was pressing 5 repeatedly. If I slow it down, you can see for the one key press, it tried to add three fives, but when it got to the third one, it changed that first one to a one. So numbers changing after they've been typed in means that the problem definitely isn't in the keypad. It's in the CPU. So that's a lot harder to try and fix, but I can start by checking all of the voltages on the board and seeing if they're good. If the CPU is not getting the right voltages, then it may not be able to work correctly. Unfortunately, all of these voltages measure close enough that I wouldn't suspect them to be the problem. The voltages should be pretty out of whack if the capacitors had problems, but I went ahead and pulled a couple and measured them anyway, but they all seemed perfectly fine to me. Well, I'm running out of ways to troubleshoot this. If the problem is inside the calculator chip, which is the one on the right here, then I can't really do anything to fix the problem externally. This is a chip from 1972, which is somewhat early into the production of ICs, so it would make sense that it failed. The reason the clock still works is that it is a separate IC over here on the left. So, th there's a chance it'll fail one day as well, but for right now it does still work. Now, it would technically be possible to pull out the calculator chip and replace it with a modern microcontroller programmed to do the same thing. But since this chip runs at nothing but negative voltages, it's not going to be an easy task. So for now, I think I'm just going to have to appreciate it as a clock. Which isn't too bad of a consolation prize, since it has these cool individual VFD tubes. These may not have as much charm as the Nixies do, but they are cool in their own right. The VFDs also make a faint, cool noise when you turn them off and on. Well, that about wraps up everything I can do for this Unisonic calculator. Since the CPU itself has gone bad, there's not a lot I can do. I could possibly get a new CPU, but people are charging about three or four times as much for loose CPUs as they are for just this calculator on eBay, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. I could possibly remake it with an Arduino and some transistors to handle the negative voltage logic, but I don't think it's worth doing. This calculator is old and slightly cool, but I don't know if it's cool enough to sink that much time into. Well, for now, I'll just have to appreciate it as a clock. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.